Hi everyone, welcome to this Maths New Student Day video. I'm Callum, a member of the Maths Department. I'm Simon, another member of the Maths Department. Uh, and today we are doing a sort of taste lesson for you on quadratic formula and discriminant. You might have come across the quadratic formula before um, and the discriminant will definitely be new. And regardless of whether it's new to you or not, we've got a little bit of practice for you so that you know, you know what we're talking about. OK, so what we're looking at here is we've got three uh, quadratic equations and you've got the quadratic formula. This should be familiar to you, but you've got the formula there in the bottom right of the screen. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause the video and using the formula, not any other method, but using the formula, you can have a calculator to help you uh, find the solutions to those three quadratic equations. OK. Right, hopefully you've had time to do that. Um, also, I want you to have a think about what are the differences between your, your answers in part two and in part three, okay? So if you need to pause the video again, just have a little think about that and do so. Um, we'll move on. Okay, back to you, Callum. Thanks, Simon. So as you can see here, we have got all three methods done for you, subbed into the quadratic formula. Um, and then at the end, as you can see here, we have our solution. So for the first one, uh, we've got it as a third form. You might have it a decimal, but it's better in this form, uh, and we'll see why shortly. Uh, but this first one was minus 2 plus or minus root 10, so you get two solutions. In this second one, there was just minus 1, so there was one solution. And then in this last one, you might notice that there are no solutions. You might get to this, and then you'd probably think, one minute, you might type in your calculator and get like a math error. Uh, the point of that is you can't do this bit here, this square root of a negative. And so it means that there are no solutions. Uh, and that's interesting, you know, that essentially we can have the same type of equation and get two, one or no solutions at all. Uh, so we're going to have a look at why that is. Uh, and Simon's going to tell you a bit more about that. OK, so uh, as Callum rightly pointed out, it's all about the number under the square root sign and whether or not it can be square rooted. If you have a positive value, then you can square root that number and you can get two answers. So it's plus or minus the square root of a positive number. Uh, and it's, 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 all, it's that part underneath the square root sign in the quadratic formula. And you can see it there circled in red, the b squared minus 4ac. That's what we call the discriminant. OK, uh, in other words, it discriminates between types of quadratic equations. You've got the three basic types. You've got the discriminant equal to zero, which would give us one solution because the square root of zero would uh, is zero and give us one answer. You've got the you've got the discriminant being positive, where if you square root that, you get the positive or negative outcome, which gives us the two solutions. And you have the discriminant being negative, being less than zero which results in no solution, which means we cannot solve the equation and there are no solutions, okay? So the, the various uh, phrases we use, I'm sorry, Cal, I'm taking over here, but I might, I might as well no, go. absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, so one root, two root, no real roots. Now there's different ways of describing that. One root, we say equal roots, so that we, we kind of say, well, there are two solutions, but they're both the same. We've got real and distinct, meaning there are two solutions and they're distinctly different. And then no real roots. Now, the reason we say that is there are uh, numbers uh, called uh, complex numbers or imaginary numbers, uh, which we don't uh, go into in the normal A-level maths program. Um, so uh, that's why we call them real roots. You don't need to uh, worry about that, but they're numbers that can be found on the normal number line. OK, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide, Callum, and carry on. OK, so now that you know that b squared minus 4ac on the discriminant uh, helps us determine how many solutions a quadratic equation has, we've got five for you here to have a go at. And what we want to do for each of them is to work out the discriminant to see how many solutions each quadratic equation has. Um, the first one's quite nice because it's in this correct form, it's in this uh, something x squared, the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. For some of the others, you might need to do some rearranging first. 
Uh, but see if you can, you know, determine how many solutions these equations have by yourself. Pause the video here uh, and give it a quick go. Just wondering, uh, Callum, can they see that number hidden under that bar on the bottom? Uh, mm -hmm. 2x, there you go, yeah. Right, so you've hopefully got a good go at them. Let's have a look at what the answers are. So for that first quadratic equation, you should have been doing uh, for b squared minus 4ac, you should have done 3 squared take 4 times 1, which is the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, times the 5, and you should have got the number minus 11. That's less than 0, and so it would have told you this equation has no real roots, or it, you know, it's got no real answers. Um, these are the number of roots for the other ones. Uh, it's worth pointing out for question two, you would have needed to rearrange this. So you would have taken 6x from both sides and added 1 to both sides. Um, but these are the number of roots that each of these equations has. Uh, anything you need to add, Simon? No, no, I think that's fine. So it's just about calculating the discriminant. Is it is it positive? Is it negative? Is it zero? And, uh, and knowing what those three outcomes mean in terms of the number of solutions or the number of roots, that's all you need to know, all right? And then we're going to take this knowledge and apply it to a more complex problem. So that's next slide then, Callum. All right, so th th this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. We've got a quadratic equation with an unknown coefficient for the x squared term. So you've got kx squared plus 2x plus 1. We're told that the quadratic has real and distinct roots. Now, if you recall back, you can rewind if you want, but if you recall back on an earlier slide, real and distinct means two roots and therefore a positive discriminant. Uh, B squared minus 4ac will be greater than zero. And the question says or asks, find the possible values of k as an inequality. So uh, the discriminant will be B squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. Subbing in for B, B is two. Don't forget to use little brackets when you're subbing in just to make sure you avoid sign errors. So a little two in brackets there, um, squared minus four times k, which is the coefficient of x squared, which is the a term, times one, which is the c term. And that simplifies to four minus four k is greater than zero. And then solving that equation, we end up with k being um, less than one. You could rewrite that the way around, k less than one. So those are the values that k would have to take. k would have to be less than one for that quadratic to have real and distinct roots. Okay. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just worth remembering if you've, you know, if you've not seen an inequality in a while, that this is just the same as solving an equation. You know, once you sub these numbers in, it's just like solving a linear equation. Just to show you in a bit more detail, we've gotten the graph of kx squared plus 2x plus 1 up here. So we can show you what happens now. When Simon talked you through that example, uh, we said that k had to be less than 1 for there to be two uh, real roots, for there to be two solutions. So I've got a little slider here for k. Currently, it's on 1. Uh, if I move that below 1, uh, you'll notice the curve moves below the x-axis. Obviously, there's more happening to it, but it has two distinct roots because those roots are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So there's one here uh, near minus 0 0.5 when, and there's one here near minus 4.5 uh, when k is 0 0.4. Obviously, the lower I make this, uh, at some point, this becomes a negative quadratic, but it still has these two real roots. Uh, you might have noticed when k was one exactly, it had uh, only one distinct root in the middle. And if we make k greater than one, it actually then ends up having no roots at all. And um, so that sort of proves, or doesn't prove, but it shows um, that our k being less than one was correct. Right, right, yeah. It's it's really important to um, to make that connection between the equation, the discriminant, and the graph of the equation because they all tie together. So when we're talking about roots, 
when we're talking about uh, solutions, we're actually talking about the point at which the curve crosses the x-axis, the values of x for when y is zero. So it's really important to connect all these bits of information together. So what you've got here is you've got three questions to have a go on your own. Okay, so just apply what you've hopefully just learned in the previous slides. I want you to pause the video now using the discriminant and have a go at finding these values of K. Okay, good luck. Right, hopefully you've had time to have a go at those. Okay, Callum's going to pick up now and show you the solutions. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for this first one here, this was the equation that we had. Uh, we were told that if I just flip back, it has equal roots. So that tells us that b squared minus 4ac equals zero. So we into this, uh, b was k, so that becomes k squared. a was three and c was two. So we get k squared minus four times three times two. I put them in brackets to make sure they are separate. Uh, four times three times two is 24. Add that to both sides, you'll get k squared is 24. And that actually gives us uh, k is plus or minus the square root of 24. And um, some of you might just have the square root of 24 as your answer, but if you're square rooting in an equation, it's a quadratic equation. Technically, there are two values that solve that. So you need plus or minus root 24. And um, for part two and part three, we've followed similar things. I'm not going to talk through the exact specifics of both of them because it's the same sort of thing except with an inequality the only things to watch out for is on number two the coefficient of x was negative three and when you square that it should become a positive so you should get nine rather than negative nine here uh, and also maybe at the end here you might have this the other way around so you might have nine twenties is less than k uh, if you divide by a negative and an inequality, don't forget that this great less than sign uh, will change to a greater than sign. Is there anything else you think we need to pick up on in this, Simon? No, no, it's actually fine. Um, solving an inequality is really no more difficult than solving a normal equation. Just to remember what Callum just said, where if you uh, divide through or times through by a negative number, it will flip the inequality around from uh, one way to the other, whichever way it happens to be at the time. Okay, so just remember that. Um, okay, let's move on. Okay, so some more questions to have a go at. Um, so this is just you practicing uh, the skills again. Um, now, in a normal classroom situation, you'd be working together as in, in groups, working on these, and we'd have teachers helping you. Fortunately, you're sat at home watching this video. Hopefully, you found it entertaining. Um, but, uh, but just uh, now, we'd just like you to sit quietly and have a go at some of these. All right, pause the video and then we'll give you the solutions. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's go through those solutions. Or oh, we'll just we'll just project them up on the screen and we won't talk through them. And there they all are. Now, um, hopefully you've got some means of contact with the college uh you might have an, an email address of the um um head of maths or something like that so if you want to ask a question about anything that you've uh, seen or heard in this video and you, and you didn't get something you want some clarification then to drop uh, drop us an email absolutely fine we'd love to hear from you um hopefully you found that interesting um Trust me, it would be more interesting in a, in a classroom <laughs> situation than being sat in your bedroom or wherever you are listening to us ramble on. But um, you're just getting a little taste of the uh, of the high quality content you can expect from the maths department. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll hopefully see you in September. Uh, take care. Um, that's goodbye yeah. from me. Yeah, goodbye from me. Have a good summer, um, and see you in September. Hopefully.